Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking through the basics of numerical differentiation. Now, what numerical differentiation does for us is it gives us an approximate derivative in a situation where it might be difficult or impossible to calculate an analytical derivative. What if we only have data points for our function instead of an actual function to use? Well, in that situation, there's no way to calculate an analytical derivative. And so we have to go another path. The basis of this, as for so many things in numerical methods, is the Taylor series. Now, what Taylor series says is that the function at some point, and I've just named that point x, is going to be equal to the function at another point, name that x bar, and that's going to be related to the derivative of a function, again evaluated at that second point x bar, multiplied by delta x, and that delta x is just the difference in space between the two points. So this is delta x is equal to x minus x bar. And then we have some additional constraints based on higher order derivatives. And we can go on further, but I'm just going to end this with an order of delta x to the fourth. So if you wanted to go higher, just remember that the number in the denominator here is equal to the order of delta x uh, factorial. So this is 2 factorial, this is 3 factorial, the next one would be 4 factorial, which is 24, and so on and so forth. Now, we'd like to use this in order to calculate a derivative. And we want that at a specific point in our data. So let's say that we're interested in the derivative at this point right here. I'm going to call this point i. So at point i, we're going to have an x of i, and that x sub i is going to yield an f sub i, which is just equal to the function evaluation of x sub i. And we can do this for other points as well. So let's say that we go one point to the right and start talking about i plus 1. This point right here is going to be i plus 1. And we're just going to name those values x sub i plus 1, which yields f sub i plus 1, which again is just the evaluation of this unknown function at x sub i plus 1. So with this nomenclature, let's go ahead and rewrite our Taylor series. We're going to evaluate our function at x sub i plus 1. So we say that f sub i plus 1 is going to be equal to f sub i. So all of our x bars are now going to be x sub i's. So this becomes f prime, but we say f i prime, and this just means f prime of x sub i multiplied by delta x, and I'll go ahead and write out the rest for you. This delta x that we have here is going to be x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. So we're taking this value x sub i plus 1, subtracting off this, and we get uh, this little delta x. Now, remember that what we're looking for here is the derivative. So we want to solve this equation for fi prime. So what I want to do is go ahead and isolate uh, this term on the left-hand side of the equation. So I will end up with a negative fi prime multiplied by this delta x, which is going to be equal to f of i minus fi plus 1. And then we have all this other stuff. 
So finally, we go ahead and solve for fi prime. And we end up with these first two terms divided by delta x. So this is fi plus 1, which the sign has been switched because we're dividing through by negative delta x, minus f of i divided by delta x. And our next term here is this minus fi double prime multiplied by only one delta x divided by two. And then we can keep out writing the rest, but really that's all that matters. So the important thing to note here is that we don't know what fi double prime is. So all of this, we're just going to throw away and call it error. And so we end up with an error that has an order of delta x. So we have additional error terms on here as well, based on the other derivatives, but they're all of higher order, meaning that they're at least delta x squared. So if we are able to decrease delta x, for instance, then those should disappear faster than this error. This first little bit here is what we call a forward difference. And essentially what we're doing with that is we're just connecting a line between these two points and calculating the derivative based on the slope of that line. Now, this is not the only way to tackle this problem. The next most obvious way is instead of using i plus one, we could also use the point to the left, which we would call i minus one. So let's write out the Taylor series. Let's write out the Taylor series for x i minus one. What we end up with is an f i minus one, which is going to be equal to f of i plus f i prime times a delta x, so on and so forth. Now, let's talk a little bit about what this delta x means. The way we have it written here, this is going to be x i minus 1 minus x sub i. But that's a little counterintuitive because we expect this delta x to be positive uh, moving to the right. So we're going to change the definition just a little bit. We're going to say that delta x here is going to be equal to x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. So we're moving from left to right, which means that our delta x is going to be starting on the left and moving to the right also. Now that messes up our equation just a little bit, but it's going to save us some heartache later. And what this change entails is just a negative sign for all of our odd derivatives. So for this first derivative, we just need to flip the sign in order to match up with our Taylor series equation up here. And likewise, for our third derivative, we need to do the same thing. Now, for our second derivative, it doesn't matter which order we're calculating this because once we square this, it's always going to be positive. So now we go through the same process of solving for this, but really, Remember that all we want here is our first derivative, this fi prime. Solving for that yields, fi prime is going to be equal to f of i minus f of i minus 1 divided by delta x. But this right here, this piece, is our backward difference. And once again, this had an error of an order of delta x. So this derivative that we calculate is just using these two points to calculate the slope. So we get a different answer from this, but remember that our error here is based on the second derivative, the curvature of this line. So if we have high curvature, as we do in these couple of points, then we're going to have a higher difference between these two values. So how do we reduce this error? Well, option one is to reduce our delta x. 
If we're able to get data at closer intervals, then we should be able to reduce the amount of error in our derivative. But what if that's not an option? What if this is just all the data that we have and we can't do anything else? The only thing we can do is try to use multiple points and maybe eliminate some of this error. Let's write both of these equations, um, but we're gonna make one small change. And that change is we're going to assume that this delta x is constant between all these points. We have a nice evenly spaced grid of points. And the way that we're going to write that is we're going to say that delta x is equal to a constant h. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite both of these equations with this small change. So now that we have these two equations, what we're going to do is, again, solve for this fi prime. But remember that our goal is to eliminate the fi double prime term because that has our h squared. If we have that, maybe we leave behind some of this fi triple prime term, but we're eliminating a full order of h on our error. So what does that actually look like? Well, this is actually pretty easy to solve. I'm going to subtract the second equation from the first equation. And I'll end up with the following. This first term is going to cancel out. Remember that we're subtracting the second equation, so these terms cancel. Then for the second term, the fi prime, we end up with fi prime multiplied by not just h, but 2h, since we have two of those. The fi double prime term cancels out, and then we still have our fi triple prime term, and then the ever pervasive higher order terms. So once again, we're gonna solve for fi prime. And we're going to end up with the following. Our fi prime is going to be equal to the difference between these two values over 2h. And then we have our error term. Now we're dividing by 2h. Hmm, this should be a 3. Sorry about that. We're going to divide by 2h. And so we end up again fi double prime. And we'll have not h cubed, but h squared and in the denominator, a six. So this right here is our central difference. And the special thing about it is that we no longer have an order of delta x or just h, but this time we actually have an order of h squared. And if you're looking for a quick and dirty solution to find the numerical derivative, this is the thing that is going to be used most often. So why is it important that we have this h squared? Well, let's say that we want to reduce our error by a factor of 100. If we're using forward difference or backward difference, these things that have a error of on the order of delta x, and we need to increase our sampling rate by a factor of 100, we need to have 100 times as many points in order to reduce that error. In contrast, if we want to reduce the error by a factor of 100 using the central difference term, well, all we need to do is increase our sampling rate by a factor of 10. We only need 10 times as many points in order to get that error reduction. So there's not much more effort required in order to calculate this, right? We still are just subtracting two separate values and taking a division but we end up with a lot less error. We're basically getting rid of all the error caused by the curvature. And what this ends up looking like is we're just taking the shortcut between these two points in order to calculate the derivative. This line here is our forward difference. This is our backward difference. And the shortcut here is our central difference, which actually turns out to be the average between the two of them. So I hope this video was informative and I hope it's useful as you venture forth uh, in your tasks with numerical methods.